On June 1st, Michael Rubenstein's murder trial begins. The defense's case turns largely on attacking the state's estimated time of death as inconsistent with the physical evidence, specifically the pattern of maggot infestation found on the bodies and the lack of any pupa cases. After two weeks of testimony, the case goes to a jury. Less than a day into deliberations, they send a note to presiding judge Keith Sterrett. The jury sent the note in and said, we are hopelessly deadlocked. And after sending them back once or twice, uh, I agreed with them and I declared a mistrial. The jury had hung 11 to 1 in favor of conviction. The sticking point in deliberations, the pupa cases, and lack of a definite time of death. In the winter of 2000, Bill Goodwin takes a second crack at convicting Michael Rubenstein of murder. Dr. Bass takes the stand and testifies that the Perrys were most likely dead at least a month before their bodies were discovered. The defense cross-examines Bass, once again making a point of the lack of pupa cases found on any of the bodies. After his testimony, Dr. Bass sits in the back of the courtroom and watches as the state medical examiner gives testimony. On an overhead screen flash photos from the autopsies. Suddenly, Dr. Bass sees a picture he had never seen before. It's a close-up of the head of four-year-old Crystal Perry. When she got up to show her slides, this was something that Bill Goodwin didn't know about or didn't, nobody knew about, really. She's showing the slides of the bodies in, in the morgue and in the little girl's hair. Uh, you could see pupil cases. In the midst of the state medical examiner's testimony, Dr. Bass rises from his seat and asks to examine the photos. Then Goodwin puts Bass back on the stand. We pointed out on the defense's picture that, hey, this is what we've been looking for. Here they were. Dr. Ward had taken photographs during the autopsy, and here were the casings. And we never had those photographs before the second trial. The new photos put to rest any doubts about time of death and clinch the case against Michael Rubenstein. Seven years after the fact, he is convicted of killing his own family so he could profit from an insurance policy taken out on his four-year-old step-granddaughter. This was as evil an act as I think you can ever see, to kill a little girl for insurance proceeds, for money, you just don't get any more evil than that. I have never seen a man that his expression, he, the epitome of evil. On February 5th, 2000, Michael Rubenstein is sentenced to die by lethal injection.